This is a little bit different beast than last year. This is a lot different. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot different. This thing is incredible. Holy cow. Look, I can get some clothes off here. Yeah. yeah. It's warming up in here already. Maybe we started a fire. <clears throat> so this is a Smoky Lake Crosshair. It's a two by six evaporator with a raised flue back pan. And this thing is incredible. It has uh, a reversing front pan so you can change the direction of the sap going into the finishing pan so that it will, uh, if you switch it every couple boils, it will clean the igniter off the bottom of the inside of the pan so you don't have so much scrubbing to do later. And then it's also equipped with an auto drawer off, which is this box over here on the wall. Um, and we got the temperature for drawer off set around 219.5. Right now, the sap in the pan is 34 and a half degrees, 34 something. So we're getting ready to light this thing and uh, watch it come to life. It will take uh, 12, 14 minutes. This thing will be in full boil mode. It is absolutely incredible. It does have a blower, so that really pushes the fire. So let's see if we can get this thing fired up for a day of oil. The biggest problem I had with my wood was not, it was for my old evaporator, so it's small wood. And uh, this beast is kind of hungry. So we get a, we've mixed it with some oak slab wood. And uh, that really puts the heat to it. Tried to start this the other day with the cap on the chimney. It didn't work very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's quite an exhaust uh, pipe in the back there, huh? The back one has a 10 inch. Wow. And also that big thermometer mm. on top. Yeah. That is the stack temperature. Huh. And we run it between 800 and 1,000 degrees. Wow. Uh, that one. Now, now that matters too, the stack temp? Well, that tells you how, yeah. And now when you see that, when the tech stack temp starts going back, you know, down below 800 degrees, that's usually when I fill it with wood. Yeah. So that it's easier than um, just guessing. Okay. And also this has a viewing glass. Oh, no way. So you can see the... You can see the fire. Jeez, they thought of everything in here, didn't they? This thing no is, more opening the door? No more opening the door. The door is pretty well airtight. Um, pretty good sized box, isn't oh, it? Oh, it, it, yes, it is. Have you been going through a lot more wood this year? Um, well, it's, it's, this is totally different, so it's hard to tell. Yeah. And due to the lack of sap production, I haven't been arrowing it down as much. Okay. Because um, this thing is, I don't know, 50 to 65 gallons an hour, it will boil. Holy cow. Okay, so we don't have to, we don't have to, arrow, we're not arrowing it because it's so little sap, I'd only have to run for it. You know, an hour and a half or so, two hours if I, I wrote it down to six, seven percent. If you are owed it down like you did last year, your boiling would be done pretty quick then. Oh, would no one get started. Wow. That's a different ball game. Yes. Now you said a blower, so that's a fan blowing in on the flame, like like a furnace almost. Yes, it's back here under under the right under the hatch here. 
Oh. Okay, sweet. Man, that thing's quiet. Yes, yeah, much quieter than the other one. Yeah. <laughs> we'll start a timer just to see. Yeah. You got starter fluid? Yes, I got my starter fluid. <laughs> how, how has this year been, Wayne, compared to past years? Terrible. I hate to even ask. Terrible. Yeah. Everybody is complaining about the weather. We get warm days, but we don't get any sunshine. We don't go below 25 at night, so I've we'll reset the trees. But I've got a couple of good runs um, where it starts noon time on a day and it will run all night huh. and in through the next day and we picked up uh, I don't know, 600 plus gallons out of run like that which is pretty nice in the beginning but it's a run we get a run about once a week maybe a little less than a week to get a second run I uh, should run today it was 25 this morning but it's cloudy so that doesn't help. Um, a big storm coming tomorrow. Well, it should run tonight for a while. So what would be like optimal conditions for running? Would it be like 25 at night? 25 at night, get up to 40 plus during the day, bright sunshine, not a lot of northwest wind. Um, best if the wind is out of the west or the southwest. Um, it gives you the best production, they say. Um, but mother nature is mother nature she'll give us what she wants and uh but you know could run into april you never know oh that's true yeah so if you peek in the looking glass there you go you can see the oh, yeah. cow. you also do cremation services in the <laughs> summer <laughs> Oh, I never thought of that. <laughs> I guess I better not make, make the wife mad. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe a way to get rid of me. <laughs> Holy cow, look at that thing glow. So, Joe, if you come over here, yeah. you can watch the temperature in the syrup pan. Oh, that's awesome. Um, coming up. So the top one's the pan? Yes, the top one's the pan. The green one is what it will open. The, solen the solenoid will open the valve and dump out the finished syrup. Or not finished, but really close to finish. Oh wow! Um, speaking of that, I better get my filters. And that's your. Uh, this is your stack, right? Yes, that's the stack temperature up there. Jeez, that came up quick too. What's it been? A minute? Two and a half minutes, and we're already over 112 degrees. It's no that's mess. That's why I wanted to come over. Water. Yeah, this is no messing around. You know when I was coming from a cold stack. It's three minutes right now, and we're at 108 degrees in the pan, and 650 out in the stack. That's crazy. So Joe, while we're waiting for that, yeah. I'll show you my homemade vacuum filter. Um, so when the syrup is finished, it's at 59 and a half bricks on the hygrometer, we have to finish finish filtering it before we bottle it. So this I created a few years ago, it's a, called a vacuum filter, which is a pot with a drain valve, a port in it so that we can hook up a shop vac, and then I put this little shield in it so the syrup doesn't get sucked into the vacuum cleaner. We put a, what they call an all on filter, and this filter, you, when you wash them and then reuse them, you want to make sure it's going um, the same direction because if we flipped it over, if there was any residue in the filter, we'd be sucking it back into the syrup. So we put an all on filter on top. We put what we call a pre-filter. It's just um, a real thin one that will uh, allow us to clean it makes the the thick stuff sticks to the pre-filter and uh, it's a lot easier to clean the oil on filter. So then we put this part on, has no bottom in it, just to hold everything in place. And we're ready to, and then 
So then we just hook this vacuum up here and you, you'll watch this pot suck down. Oh yeah. And that's how they make these now, um, which are a lot bigger and they're about twelve hundred dollars to stack. <laughs> this is uh, a couple Walmart pots and you know some parts about the fifty bucks. So the, this works great. Um, we aren't boiling it too much at the finish anymore, so this one uh, doesn't filter as hard. Last year when we boiled it on the stove to get it finished, it really was uh, slow filtering um, without the vacuum filter. So let's see what our fire is doing here. Uh, We're at five minutes. 291. You might want to peek in here, Joe, before this yeah. thing gets really steamy. So the tray in the middle that you see yeah. collects the condensation that's on the steam stack um, and then it comes out over here on the other side. So if you were um, off the grid, this is actually comes out as hot water. So a lot of people when they're off the grid, no power, they use this to clean stuff. Oh yeah. Um, but I, I've got running water here so I don't need it. We'll close those doors up so they'll create a little, little more heat in there. Um, we're six minutes in. I think I'll throw some more wood in. So I got to shut the blower off. If not, it gives me a face full of ashes. Wow, that thing chews it up, doesn't it? Yes, it does. But like I said, it's the wood's a little small. Evaporator. You listen. You, you can hear the boil. Yeah. It really comes to life. Wow. Wow. You're two. Yeah. Two ten. So two ten. We're almost to the boiling point of water. Two eleven. Two eleven. She'll come to life now. Yep. And then your stack's almost at seven hundred. Yeah. You watch that. That'll be eight hundred. Wow, this is amazing. Yeah, so I, on this evaporator, I did away with my preheater because it's, it's, oh, that's it's, right. going, yeah. it's going so fast that um, I, it, I didn't think there would be a need for it. Um, and it seems to be working out just fine. If you look in the uh, vent tube, or that's my basically my tank, it tells me how much sap's in the tank. And that that hole up there is actually a little fishing bobber. <laughs> 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 Last week I turned the tank valve on too quick and I shot it right out the top. Of oh the no way! <laughs> yeah. Huh. So. And then, so these are these oh, your yeah. steam pipes, yeah. or? I've got to open up the hoods on the, the cooler. I mean. I got about that. I'm trying to get the building warmed up pretty good. Well, it helps. Excuse me. The only question is, where's your bed? Uh, so far, it's still in the house. <laughs> So somebody told asked me the other day, they said, he must make a lot of money with maple syrup. <laughs> oh yes, I sure do. I said the quickest way to become a millionaire making maple syrup is to start with two million. That is the correct answer on that. Uh, no, this is a, a labor of love. Um, you have to enjoy it and you have to enjoy spending money, I guess. <laughs> So we're going to put another filter here on the evaporator because we just keep paying attention here. This will be now uh, we're going to 212, so we must be just about full boiled here. And 
that see with her. Now this isn't boiling yet, but she's coming. Man, it already smells good in here. It always smells good in here, but that really smells nice. I, I, I get a whiff of it every once in a while. Yeah. But in general, I, I never smell it. Everybody tells me it smells good. Yeah. <laughs> That's like when I worked at the farm. Everybody told me it smelled bad, and I didn't notice. It's all what you're used to. Yeah. You know, after, you know, I can smell it right now. A bit. Yeah. Wow, that exhaust pipe shot up. Yeah. 950. Yeah. All right, so that's ready to go. 10 minutes. 10 minutes in, we're pretty good. We're in a good boil. Front pan. Yeah, the front pan here, I don't know if you can see it. Um, oh, yeah. So it's boiling pretty good in there. Oop. That's really hot. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this one's boiling. So, it's hard to see in there because of the hood. Right. But, um, so I would say, you know, we're at a complete boil. Two, 11 minutes and a half, I'll call it. That was quick. Going from 34 degrees. That's quick. Um, it is incredible. Now, does that hold it at 212? No, no, because that obviously jumps up and down due to wood, how okay. the wood's going. Um, so it's 212.9, so obviously there's a lot of water in it because it's holding steady. Um, and But it won't take long to get to 219.5. Um, you know, it's, it would be great to be able to boil every day with this rig so you could really get used to it and fine tune it, but yeah. it's such sporadic. Now, if we had a lot and we could boil all day, every day, we could fine tune the drawer off so we wouldn't even have to check it over here. Wow. Okay. Holy um, cow. But, and it's really, um, one person really can't run it because of my small drawer off box. Um, a lot of guys, what they do is draw it all off put it in a big pot and then they finish that one pot at the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, well, we're not quite set up for that yet. <laughs> we'll see what happens here in the next few years, but we got to get better weather. And they're, are they finishing off that big pot with like a system similar to this or? Yeah, yeah. They warm it up, check it with the hydrometer to make sure it's 59 and a half bricks and then, you know, uh, filter it again and then bottle it. Uh, you know, everybody does it a little different. Um, by no means am I a professional sugar maker. Um, they all say in order to be a professional sugar maker, you have to burn one of your pans. Um, <laughs> so fortunately, I've never burnt a pan. Oh, no, knock on wood. <laughs> um, so we're, uh, we've come close. So now I, I was boiling here one day afternoon and I boiled a little too long and I ran out of sap in the tank and the back pan was getting real low. The top of the flues was showing. We still had a lot of fire going, so I, I panicked. So now over there in the corner, there's a five gallon bucket with water in it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so in case of emergencies, we can dump it in. Yeah, <laughs> I've, been, I've watched one burn once. Yeah, um, so, you know. And it, it helps you get that visual aid on the on right. your tank too. Right. The, yes, the sight glasses here too, but there's also sight glasses oh, here yeah. that tells us this is for the front pan. Okay. So that's the level of the front pan. Um, and then there's one on the other side that tells you the level of the back pan. Um, it, I never leave the sugar house for more than a minute or something. If I'm here alone, I might run in the house to get something, grab a, grab a snack or something. But the biggest mistake most people make is they say, well, I got to go to the house for a minute. And then they get in there and they get whatever talking and uh, they come back out and their pans burn. Oh. 
you know. Um, and that, I, that happens when you don't have sap or when you, you when Just like boiling something, cooking something on the stove and, yeah. it, and it boils dry, same thing. Without liquid, it's going to burn. So what are we up to, Joe? Two, two thirteen and a half. We're getting him. Stack temperature's coming back down. So we'll get when she gets around eight hundred, we'll fill her up again. How helpful is this? Uh, is this the case? Stat, oh yes, that, it's really helpful. When the guy said it had one, I said, "Well, what's the purpose of all that?" But sure. He said, "No, no." He said he ran it nine hundred to a thousand degrees. So he said when it started, when it got above 900, he'd open the door and fill it up again. So I don't want it quite that high. Um, we're still a little nervous about the, the beast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I'll open another door here and see if we can get a little more steam. Man, there's not, there's not much steam compared to last year. Well, no, no, there's nothing in here. Yeah. The only, you know, we're getting condensation because the building's cold. Yeah. Um, uh, that's the direction the wind is going today. Is it, is it, uh, is it coming out of the south today? Well, according to the steam going through the cooler, it is. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to go through the cooler. So you were asking about the cost of doing maple syrup. <laughs> yeah. Well, yes, it's very expensive. Yeah. So, I asked the wife if I could upgrade my evaporator, and she said, well, yeah, because we picked up another sugar bush, and we were expecting to have a real busy sugar year, um, but Mother Nature had other plans. So, we went to Vermont one Saturday morning, 200 miles one way, pick up this evaporator, and then... Uh, while I was working the next week, uh, she went out and bought a new pickup, <laughs> and she said we were even. So, cost of maple syrup equipment is very expensive these days. <laughs> did that fellow upgrade his, or did he, he get actually, out of it? He actually lost his sugar bush. Oh. Huh. He was only a hobby cat for like I am, and yeah. so, as you can see, we're out of one again. Wow. That's the problem with this one if you're talking too much. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to get you. So we were down to what, 600 degrees on the stack? That's pretty quick, isn't it? It's up to 700 already. Oh, yeah. Look at that needle just fly. Yeah, Donnie will be over in a little bit. He had to. Take care he, of some business. He's waiting for a call from the Amish. They got to schedule it two weeks in advance for a phone call because they use a phone booth or something. I don't know. I was going to say, pretty hard for them. They probably have, they have to look for a pay phone. I haven't seen one of them in years. <laughs> I know it. <laughs> I see a phone booth in a couple spots like Unity and. and oh, a, really? Yeah, Smyrna Way. They got like a phone booth for the community. Yeah. It looks like a bus stop weight, you know? Yeah, yeah, because they can't have it in there. They can't have one in their business or their house. Yeah. So it has to be outside. Yeah, the ones around here can't. In Smyrna, they're allowed to actually have one in the business. Oh, yeah, because of... The just dif of just different Amish, yeah. Well, no, it, I watched a video um, on YouTube of them building a, uh, building a barn. And they talked to the elders, they didn't show their faces on the video, and they said, we as a society, the Amish society has to adjust their ways for the local environment for that community of Amish. Yeah. So that video I watched just happened, a guy was doing a drone video of Lancaster County yeah. before like the week before Thanksgiving. 
and he showed that dairy farm. It was immense. Oh. Thanksgiving morning, the dairy barn burned. They started planting that afternoon, and in six working days, they because they won't work on Sunday, they had that barn back up, the roof on it, and ready to put the cows back in it. Wow. And I'm talking, this barn was immense. Jeez. I mean, this thing was absolute. They had 500, they estimated they had 500 Amish guys. On, on holy cow and they work 24 7. wow you know they had like so they did have some local contractors and they had um you know like uh, big construction forklifts and stuff but they were like ants because they had drone videos and, yeah. and they were black ants crawling <laughs> all over the building crazy um, they had less staging probably than i own on this one mile. oh my god because <laughs> they just climbed like monkeys how you doing, Hope So while the flames are down in the evaporator, I'll show you this pan and how it works. So the the sap comes from the back pan and it comes into this back flue here. And you see the color is quite brown, or I guess it's brown. And then uh, if you on this side of the pan, it actually from there it comes outside this with this pipe. You can see it. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, my beak out of the way. Uh, and then it goes into the front part of the pan here, comes into this one, and it goes down and it crosses over, and then it goes up this one, crosses over, and that is uh, the closest to syrup liquid in this pan. And then when the auto draw off, which is tied into the third flue, it will uh, it will dump it out here. And we're at 216.7. Um, I'm going to put some more wood in and maybe this run it will get us the syrup. That auto dry off goes right on its own? Yes. Amazing. Oh, I guess we just going to shake the whoop out that a little bit. They're going to ask where you get your slab wood from. Actually, I bought it from the Amish. Oh, no way. Uh, $40 a roughly a cord for 16 inch. I figured there was no sense to waste my time to saw it up at $40 and they loaded it on the trailer. Jeez. Well, when you got a dozen kids at home, it don't take long for them to fill the trailer. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say, I didn't know you milled oak. No, the actual the oak came from Ben over to Sheep's Creek General. Yeah. Um, because I'm tapping that sugar bush and he's not boiling, he had uh, Five quarter oak slabs. Oh, he did! Wow. Twenty bucks a quarter. Twenty bucks a bundle. So it's forty dollars a quarter for those oak slabs. Um, and I'm mixing them in because I I burnt dry oak before. Yeah. We could turn this baby cherry red if we filled it with. It's it's four years old. The oak is. Wow. What do you like the best? The hemlock really works good, um, but like I said, my other evaporator. Was a lot smaller, so that's why I didn't mind the small wood. So we've got to get switched over to you know wood this size and make it you know around this size is good. Um, so we'll have to figure something out this year. Um, and uh, you know, and I I've, I've got some I've got some slabs out back, but I cut them all 20 inches, and this one's really only got a 16 inch firebox, so. We'll have to cut some new ones, I guess. Yeah. Well, 217. We're getting there slowly. It's about, a, it's about 15 minutes between draw-offs, I should say. I never really timed it. It'll dump off half to three quarters of a gallon at a time. Oh, wow. Um, sometimes the first one dumps off a little heavier because of boiling more in the whole pan. The, the cycle isn't um, really got going on the pan. Now you said a back pan too, is there? Is well, there... some, I call this the front pan because I call this the front of the <laughs> aggregate. So that's the back pan. 
Okay. Some people will call that the front. I don't know. It's like the front yard and the back yeah. yard. Okay. Yeah. I'm not on a road, so here at the house, so this is the front yard. <laughs> yeah. Now is is that actually boiling in the back pan? Oh yeah, that boil because but boiling. it doesn't finish. No, it's boiling the water off. Oh okay. Because we're if I arrowed it down to four percent, which is 20, 20 ish gallons, twenty two gallons of liquid, and then that's a gallon of syrup. So we got a lot of water still to boil off. So that's really off, you know that's boiling. We're only boiling the water. Okay, sir, you've got all the water boiled out when it hits around 219, 220, or approximately all the water, what you need to make it syrup. So all the steaming is from water boiling. We're just trying to reduce the, reduce the water in it is what we're doing. Oh yeah, this thing is boiling. Uh, you know, you can cook lobsters in here. <laughs> if, you, if, you want, if you want to step right up on the my granite doorstep. If you can see down. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Oh yeah. Wow, that's ripping boy. Yeah. And uh, the build the new uh, steam stacks work really good. Uh, I didn't think I was gonna like the setup, but it's uh, working out pretty good. Jar up shortly. Oh nice. Green light by the red one. Come on. Oh, it just came on. Yep. That's amazing. Thank you. So we'll let that filter through. Through that. Those are pretty quick yeah, too. No, yeah, no, there's uh, not enough. Uh, it, but you can see it's already plugged in the filter because it's not. Oh yeah. Especially on the startup because of you know it's cooled down. You know the stuff on the pans have come free. It always seems to really plug the fresh filter too. So we'll let it. You have to. Play with the filter. Try to burn our fingers. <laughs> this is 192 degree liquid. So it normally gets through that filter even quicker? Yeah. So I'll show you. The filters look pretty disgusting. Looks like a coffee filter. Yeah, it's just the contaminants in the, in the syrup. Basically burn it. You know, the stuff burning on the side of the pans mm -hmm. because of the fluctuation in the liquid. What are we, 216 already? Yeah. So see, it won't take long uh, to boil another three degrees worth. And we'll dump off again. It's really amazing the difference in evaporators. Um, what know, a different beast. It, it, uh, you know, I didn't know much about these Smoky Lakes. They're one of the supposedly best boiling evaporators there is. Uh, not that I'm an expert in evaporators, but uh, it works pretty damn good in my opinion. So this one actually weighed, I think weighs less than the one I sold, which is an 18 by 60. The only fire brick in this one to, is raiding the firebox. Huh. Up on the back part of the uh, arch, there's only about an inch and a half or two inch air gap under that back pan. And of course, with the raised flues in it, those flames are going right up into those the huh. flue. And I think it is a, I think it's an eight inch, might be a nine inch flue. Um, and it really, it really, uh, engineer them for the best oil. Uh, you buy them directly from the factory. Do you know where they're made? 
They're made here in the U.S. somewhere. Else. Huh. I don't know. I gotta find some glasses. I could look it up. It didn't. It didn't say. Uh... Huh. Oh no, kidding. The Corsair is right. That yeah, Corsair is the is the style of Africa. Oh oh no, kidding. Okay. So I tried, I thought about buying a new one, but uh, I didn't think I could get it here in time for the season. So I opted for a new one. Well, you did well just to find one, didn't you? Yes. Well, <laughs> so they've been two or three of them for sale here in Maine in October, November, and December. And of course, when I wanted one, there was none to be found. I bought this one on Saturday. I was getting it in the building on Sunday and went in for a, for a snack and cut the coffee and pulled up Facebook Marketplace and there was a tube of six in West Cassidy. No. Oh, jeez. Not a smoky lake. Yeah. Uh, actually, it's still for sale. Uh, it's like, really? 25 miles away instead of 200? But it was a nice ride to go on. So how many trees are you tapping this year? Oh, I, I must have a couple hundred trees. We got, I don't know, 60 or 80 buckets out just for the, the sake of putting them out. Yeah. You know, people like to see them. And then if the grandkids are around, they love collecting, um, you know, so. It doesn't matter this year, I'm sure to have a thousand. Uh, yeah. It's just one of those years. But Donnie must put you up over the edge. Oh, Donnie, yeah, he brings me 25, <laughs> 30 gallons uh, a couple times a week when he's running. Uh, I asked him, since he's selling his mother's house, has he got it in the uh, sales agreement that he has a lifetime contract? To, he uh, should. Tap his mother's trees. She planted them, right? <laughs> yeah. And, uh, he just chuckled, but maybe the Irish will let him tap him still. Well, it looks like one of your biggest fans is here. You've never met him yet. I'll introduce you, but okay. this guy, he sucked down the syrup pretty good. All right. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I heard he's got some strange name. Yeah, yeah, another way. Should I bring him around front? I'll bring him around front. That's the official one. I hope he hasn't put me on too big a pedestal. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh that, was, that was a, you know, that cinnamon maple syrup was. Uh, yeah, I think we got the making. I think we've made a little. Well, we're going to we'll probably have to make some more because I've got a couple other people addicted to the cinnamon. Yeah, we're going to take some more. And, uh, You've got a pretty neat setup for smoking that stove. Well, this is. This is a complete new evaporator. Oh, it isn't the one you have? No, no, no. We, oh, we, uh, that was so educational. Well, this one's uh, a lot more efficient. Yeah. Oh, okay. A lot faster. It's, in, it's absolutely incredible. Yeah. And I had Joe come over when I, before I started so yeah. he could see how this thing boils. Yeah. The sap that was in these pans was at 34 degrees this morning yeah. and we lit the fire up and set a timer on my phone in less than 12 minutes we were boiling oh my gosh i mean where we go 12 yeah and we weren't just it wasn't just a little boy it was boiling uh, so now we're uh, it's I'm, I'm still learning so yeah. i have to yeah. Pay attention to this, not the, <laughs> not the company. Not the company no. um, this is the, the gauges over here he showed me. So that's the that's the temperature of the, of the oh, yeah. evaporator. Yeah. It's 217.8, and that's the chimney temperature okay. right there. So he's yeah. running 850 right no, there. I, I never realized it was so scientific. That video Most people have no idea the amount of work and the amount of, uh, well, I call it science. Yeah. Okay. This yeah. is a it's a large science experiment. Yeah. Every time we're in the boiler. Yeah. 
Um, I had my granddaughter's Girl Scout troop over here, and, and I'm, I'm sure I was way over their heads yeah. <laughs> with the numbers and everything. Yeah. But it is. It's a yeah. huge, huge science project. Um, and with this new evaporator, I have to, I have to pay a lot more attention to things because <laughs> she's a she's a real beast. Things happen a lot quicker, don't oh, they? Oh yes, yeah. Totally new, or just no, new to me. No, no, I couldn't. I couldn't afford a totally new one. This one, this one cost me a new pickup <laughs> to go along with it. Joe was asking if this was expensive to get into, and I said, "Oh yes." Expensive to save. Yeah, yes. Being a healthy life. Cost, cost him a new pickup for his life. <laughs> oh, that was her trade-off. Yeah, 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 yeah. She said it's an even swap. Oh, okay, yeah. So good. Here he is. Here comes your sap. Here comes the old sap sucker. Yeah. Oh yeah. Now we're now we're gonna be cooking. Yeah. Don't eat donuts. Eat donuts. Just showing up. He ain't got no donuts. He's here. Imagine if he brought donuts. Could you imagine if he did bring donuts? When I was in the house getting my coffee, the wife was in the process of making something. I saw her heading down the road. But she had to go to the egg factory to pick up some eggs. Oh, is that where she was headed? Yeah, she I saw over, her going down the road. She went over to Ryan's house to tend the chickens and pick up some fresh eggs. We were, all, we were out. All right, go on, Clyde. You're going to make it go. She ready? Yeah, there she goes. Off she comes. That is awesome. How they build a solenoid that can handle that and try to heat? I yeah. don't know. Well, originally the uh, dry off box that's over there on the wall was mounted right here. Okay? And if you look at that box on the sides of it, it says keep away from moisture and heat. And I'm thinking, why is it bolted on the side right. of the evaporator? If well, you go, if you go, 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 I'm going to dump them right in right now. You want me to borrow your house, Sarah, for you? Leave them up there. Come out here. Yeah. Keep them cold, right? Yeah. No, I, I'll have Joe help me put them in the tank. Yeah, man. no problem. Uh, Come on I in. I thought I could dump them right in there right now. Uh, Where's the rest of the buckets? Haven't you been listening to the last few years? There's a method to your madness here, yeah, I'm sure. Tony, this one Tony, where's the rest of the sap? In the trees, you, I guess. You've got to tighten the belt on those trees. Squeeze them a little high. Well, it was down to 22 last night. Yeah. Wow, it should be. So I think it, but it's not warming up very good today. Yeah. Mother Nature, mood swings. Yeah. Think we can get one more yeah. week of it? Mine. I think it'll stop running later and probably will run all night. Yeah. If, if, it if, it up, yeah. Up. if the sun had stayed out until 10 o'clock this morning to get them going, you know, yeah. shoot, they'd take off. Yeah. Yeah. No, they don't, it surely don't like to run on an east wind, that's for sure. So we'll yeah. see. If not, it will run Monday. Yeah, I mean, next week's supposed to be 40 to 50. You know, after this storm, they're talking a couple inches of wet snow here that will really cool the trees down. Yeah. Oh, here? We're getting yeah. snow? Yeah, it's starting out that way. Wow. Yeah, it changes yeah. the rain, I think. Yeah, yeah. one way or the other. Yeah. And uh, it is, you know, we'll know for sure come Tuesday. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we just changed the filter on the, on the, Sap coming into the filter system. The other one is getting clogged up. <laughs> well, I, I got probably 60 buckets out over at my woodlot. I have a, a young grove of uh, mostly red maples. And I, I tap some over there and I tap the, the best producers of some rock maple on my mother's lawn. Four rock maples that I tap there. Right, yeah, I, I produce. I produce more there than I do over in my woodlot. It, it's unbelievable. <laughs> those four trees. I mean, those four trees. Oh, it's 
unbelievable how much they they uh, you know produce. Do you, do you have a spoon out here? Uh, no. If you wanna go I back. wanted to test this. See if it's good. Go rap on the door. And see no, if you'll give me out. No, you won't. <laughs> She's got to sell me some syrup anyway, Tommy. Huh? She's got to sell me some syrup anyway. Yeah, he does. I'm going to rouse that. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell him you've got a customer on you. Yeah. It, 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 I don't know how warm that is. Probably is, but no hotter than coffee. Mm. Boy, that's so good. <laughs> yeah. This is still changing temperature because this was That's the temperature, right? Well, this is this dial adjusts for the temperature of the sap. Okay. Oh. So we gotta let it kind of sit here for a few minutes and, and equal. Oh, okay. And then I'm gonna actually turn that guy video. So it's 60s up to 61. Yeah. So we're. Uh, 61 is there, so we'll weigh about. So we're going to have to thin that baby down. She's kind of thick. Yeah, that's right. It, it's, it was, when I dipped the spoon, it was thick. Right. Oh, oh. it's too thick. Yeah, yeah. Too thick. Oh, oh gosh. I thought, now, would you, what do you do with that? I'll just yeah, draw it No, no. Water. I've been boiling water off. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I thought you pour some back in it. I'll, uh, I'll draw a sap. I'll eat. Well, it's not raw. It's not. <laughs> you can actually take it right out of here. This is close to syrup. Oh, I see you're getting it before it gets in. Well, before uh, I got to put some wood in the fire. Yeah, sure. Oh, that looks done. That's probably close to done as well. <laughs> Don't pay attention, he boils it over. He's talking all the time. There's viewers that would lick that pan clean. Go ahead. It's a clean pan. You know, 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 we started. But it's not. So. Oh, there isn't? No, I mean, it looks like the stuff in the bottom when you oh, set, set it to the same. That's pretty, that light, light. Uh, that's pretty. That was a golden. So this one, yeah. I was going to do another one day. Beautiful. Then shut that valve off right there. This one? Yeah, turn it. Yeah, thank you. That would be a big yeah, one. Yeah, you can well, that. Well, 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 well. Never more than a little yeah. Yeah. Turn it yeah. off. Yeah. Turn it off. Yeah. This is Jake. Is it Jay or Jake? Jake. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the syrup in there. Yeah. Yeah, we're gonna hook the shop back now. You know, because those ones in the old grain calls, right, yeah. they boil it once. Yeah. This has a dial. You can adjust the temperature. So, so if it's right. below 180 degrees, we just um, it will come on and warm it up so it's at the right temperature to bottle. Well, you have to bottle it between 170 and 185. So. Okay. Anything over 185, you know, we'll call it 190, we'll make the sugar sands. Oh, okay. So you have, it's going to be below that. Yeah. Um, and at 180, it sanitizes the bottles and seals the lids. Okay. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Um, we have a friend who used to be a health inspector for the state. Sandy. And, and she says, you know, there's no way there's any contaminants in it. Because you're bottling it at 180 degrees. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, so, so I'll tip this a little bit. I'm um, oh. Shut the valve back off. So how much sap did you collect yesterday? 
260 gallons, I guess. Oh, oh wow. Um, it was running when I collected, so I'm sure there's a little bit in it. In it. Yeah. Did you ever do any syruping when you were young? I, I never did, but my mother did. And she tapped, we had six big rock maple on the lawn at that time. And she would boil it down in the house on the, on the wood stove. And she was also a hairdresser. And she did hair in the other part of the house. Well, she, while she was boiling this down, she must have do someone's hair and forgot about, kind of forgot about it, like boiling down. Well, she overboiled it. We had a metal ceiling in the kitchen at that time, and the sap was just dripping off the metal ceiling. <laughs> oh, what a friggin' mess. Oh, it was awful. Oh, she, she didn't swear very often, but I think she might have so, said a few swear words that time. But, uh, yeah, that, that's the only experience I've had about boiling. <laughs> oh, you got the old-fashioned diaper dryer back there. <laughs> yeah. Well, that changes the taste of things. <laughs> <laughs> so that bottle is going to fall out. So you're going to have to shut yeah. it off with your hand. See. You've got all the stuff. He got all <laughs> the Well, your mother didn't have one of those. No, <laughs> she was running around trying to catch the drink <laughs> on the ceiling. Here. <laughs> I would like, for me, I would like the darker better than. Yeah, me too. I like. More but in Ver stuff. in Vermont, the office. In Vermont, they they die for that. Uh huh. That light stuff. The light stuff. I, I don't. The flavor. Just isn't right. there. Right. right. Everybody, I've had a lot of people say, well, I went to buy some of your syrup at the store, and all they had was dark or very dark. And I'm, I'm a, I really like the light stuff. And yeah. they buy it anyway. And they go home and they try it and they go, oh, this is really good. That's a lot better than that light stuff I've been drinking. Yeah. yeah. So how do you get to light the dark? So the lightest was the beginning of the year. So this was all fresh, clean. You know, hasn't been sitting around. So obviously, the more you cook it, the dirtier it gets, or darker it gets, I should say. Um, and it's warmer out, so the stuff that's left in the pan starts to the bacteria. Some of it comes from the trees too, right? right? And as the season goes on, the trees get darker. It might get a little cloudy because. The ground is changing. They're, yeah, they're the, getting ready to bud. Out. Yeah, and the closer they get the button, it changes the color. I was in the sugar house over there, the other side of Rangeley, um, middle of April, a couple of years ago. We walked in and went, "Whoa, what's that smell?" And they were boiling. They were actually boiling what they call bud syrup. Um, the buds had come out on the trees, and they were making maple syrup. Somebody wanted 50 barrels it was unreal smell in the sugar house oh. they use it for flavoring because it's stronger for the glycerol and then she'll get uh, a sample of the sink so I can spill it you see what grade it is oh, that's a little bit too much yeah that's that's now when you were in school if they had this in science class you probably paid a lot of attention to this. Yes. <laughs> Donnie's daughter actually does. Um, yeah, what she do for what's her title in the uh, teaching world? Yeah, it's all clear. She has five tools that she goes around and teaches. And we'll press this and see what number we get. Right here, Don. Bill. Thirty-six. It's between 25 and 49, so it's dark. Yeah, Liberty. That's four. Well, he said he tapped the tree, went down like it was warm water, so he dumped it into some wheat for that syrup to come out the tree. Oh, my word. You can't get bigger. Yeah, no. I guess he thought, you know, it's going to come right out of the tree. He's not going to do anything. Oh, yeah. Dump the water. Each time you want to get bigger. 
I hope the Amish are sorry, because we're going to need more wood. <laughs> well, I'll let him lock up here, King from the Amish. Back here. Okay. This might be leader, this might be, um, you know, a different brand. Um, so we, I'm giving it, saving them. Um, these are what we use today. Like a big sugar bush, 30,000 taps, they put brand new ones of these on every year. So they have to go out, cut the old one off. They cut, I think they cut the old ones off when they pull the taps. Okay. And then they stick the end of the thing on to a stud so they can wash it if they, wa if they back flush the lines. When they go to tap the tree, they put new ones of these on, 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 on here. This goes in, then they drill the hole and put this in the tree. So that one on the other side of Rangeley starts the 1st of January with four or five guys on snowshoes. And they start drilling holes, daylight to back. How many taps in the tree? If the tree is, we'll say, over two foot, they might put two. One from eight inch to, you know, 24, 28 inch diameter. And then they go two, and then when you get a tree like this, they say the max is three. Ah, some of the old trees you might get away with four. Um, this is what they used to use way back. They made them out of, this is a piece of sumac because the center is hollow. My grandson likes to play with knives and whittle, mm -hmm. so he whittled this out. But that sumac, you take a piece of wire and you can push the center out. And then you got yourself yeah. A, yeah. a tube. Tube. And that, that's an old sap bucket yeah. from back in the day. And then this, nice. yeah, and this over here, this yoke. It doesn't fit my shoulders. Too small for a uh, cow. So when they tapped all them buckets and snowshoes, they'd hang a bucket off each one of these. And the old timers would walk to the tank, you know, because a uh, five gallon bucket on each arm, and you do that every day for six, eight weeks in northern Vermont on snowshoes. Um, your shoulders, your arms would be down, you could tickle your toes. <laughs> You're still on my team, though. You guys are making it. Well, you know, back in the day, you know, back in the 50s and 60s, all the dairy farms had a lot of stat, you know, manpower, employees, and they all and they all boiled syrup because they could go, they put them to work. You know, plenty of time to collect. But now with tube, with the plastic tube, it has changed the industry by a thousand percent. Are you grinding it? I've got some gravity, I got some on vacuum, I got some on buckets. We get a little, so if you look out the door here, you'll see the blue line. Yeah. That's, that's a sap line that runs all the way down to the side of the pond down there. And that's on the vacuum. So that's that. Okay. Yeah. 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 Should be running through the line, walk through the air bubble. Really see the difference in what's left in the sap for water. This is still got a lot of water, a little less, even less, and real close to syrup. This one is 215 and a half degrees. My eyes are right. Um, but and also the color. Yeah, let me put it back.